Hey, it's Jacob Weisberg from Pushkin Industries. I am really excited to introduce you to Pushkin's newest show, The Chronicles of Now, short fiction inspired by the news. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's a fruitful time for material. And given the news about Michael Cohn getting sprung from prison, we couldn't wait to get the first episode out. So here's a sneak preview. More episodes will be coming out weekly starting Wednesday, June 24th. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Here is the Chronicles of Now. Special Counsel Robert Mueller, the FBI has executed search warrants at the office of Michael Cohen, the president's personal lawyer. In a world gone haywire, sometimes art is the only thing that can make sense of it all. He was the president's fixer, the man who once said he'd take a bullet for Donald Trump. I'll do anything to protect Mr. Trump. This is The Chronicles of Now, short fiction torn from today's headlines. I'm Ashley Ford. I regret the day I said yes to Mr. Trump. This week, a story about that guy there, Michael Cohen, by this guy here, novelist Jess Walter. We all for a moment stopped and rooted for the most ridiculous character to finally tell the truth and finally be listened to. I regret all the help and support I gave him along the way. The president's longtime lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, heading off to prison for three years. This is him leaving his New York... Michael Cohen is going to head up to now 75 miles northwest of New York City to Otisville, New York, where the prison is. Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, will be released early from prison because of the coronavirus pandemic. When I saw that he was being released from prison, I did like a Google search and just saw that according to rumors, he's writing a book. Oh, and that he wants it to come out before the election. Cohen will serve the rest of his time in home confinement. Yeah, it just felt like the makings of a great, really short story. Here in Otisville, everyone betters himself. GREs, LSATs. My celly is studying for his real estate license. And me? I've lost 30 pounds and started writing. I was popular the minute I arrived. Most guys wanted to know if Mr. Trump was as terrible as he seemed. Yes especially the black and Spanish guys, they hate him. They'd ask, is it true he wears adult diapers? No comment. Did he do that thing with the Russian hookers? No comment, but duh. Some guys wanted legal advice. I had to confess, my areas of expertise were more taxicab medallions and foreign policy. My wife was worried that prison would be like law and order, but I told her everyone here is nice. Well, almost everyone. The fat man has his fans here, too. Fox fucks and psychopaths, mostly. The fox fucks admire him because he tells smart people to pound sand. The psychos like him because he gets away with everything. Otisville is medium security, like a middle school with razor wire. There are tennis courts and kosher food, and I was the biggest star here once Mike the Situation from Jersey Shore got released. That's when I knew it was going to be okay. That life inside wasn't so different from life outside. The day I saw the situation outside the rabbi's office... Michael Cohen, he said. Sitch, I said back. We bro-hugged. Celebrity is the great equalizer. Now that I write that, I guess it's the opposite of an equalizer. Because it makes you unequal. Hmm, this is going to be harder than I thought writing a book. 
My lawyer says they'll hire a ghostwriter, but I kind of want to do it myself. More betterment. But the words, equalizer, situation, stormy, fixer, rat, it really makes you think. I have only one enemy in here. This gray-haired guy doing eight years for fraud. It's his second stint in Otisville. He's like the yard bull. He calls me rat, fixer, snitch. Everyone calls him the Pons, because he specialized in Ponzi schemes, and because of the Fonz from Happy Days. Once, we were in the activity room watching the news, and Giuliani was tripping on his own dick. And the pawn said he looked like one of those balls you squeeze for stress, where the eyes pop out. You just said you didn't. No, I didn't ask him to look in a joke. Even you were a better lawyer than that guy, said the pawns. Thanks, I said. But it wasn't a compliment. That even words. Then the pawn said, you miss it, don't you, rat? I ignored the rat part. Not at all, I said. I've lost 30 pounds. My conscience is free. Come on, he said. You miss it. You fucked up by talking. You could have gotten a pardon. Instead, You know what snitches get, right? That's when I got scared. There aren't actual gangs here. No La Raza or Aryan Brotherhood. But it doesn't mean you don't have to watch your back. For instance, the Ponds is in a book club, the WCOG, White Collar Original Gangsters. To get in... You have to be doing at least a nickel for tax evasion, fraud, or insider trading. They meet in the quad to talk about CEO autobiographies. Sometimes they mix in a Michael Lewis or Malcolm Gladwell book, but only to trash it. I didn't sleep well after the pawn said that. Was he right? Did I miss it? I mean, on my phone, he was just T. I can't tell you how that felt. The president, calling me. And now, would I ever be more than a joke to the MSNBC lame streamers? A traitorous rat to the Fox Fox? I felt so alone. For a while, there was a rumor that Martin Shkreli was getting transferred to Otisville. I imagined roaming the halls with another celeb, showing the farmer bro around. There's the weight room, and here's the basketball courts, and there's the pharmacy. We'd laugh. The pharmacy. Then the pawns would see us, and I'd say, Hey, pawns, you stole millions? This dude stole billions. Suck on that. They ended up sending Shkreli to a different prison. And I was truly alone. The only celebrity on my block. One day, I was in the activity room, and a guy tripped on my laptop cord and unplugged it. I looked up. It was one of them a WCOG book clubber. He apologized, but I got the message. I wasn't safe anywhere. If this was a TV jail, I'd carve a spoon into a knife or fill a pillowcase with soap. But here at Otisville, 
There was nothing to do but tell my counselor. And he was a gestalt therapist who tried to frame the whole thing as a patterned reaction I have to feelings of rejection. It was my lowest point. But that's when the virus arrived. And everything changed. No more activities. No more book club. And without his boys, the Pons was just another old fraud. Then came even better news. They were sending some of us home early. And I was one of the lucky ones. Honestly, I hadn't wanted to admit how much I missed my family. Even to my therapist. It hurt too much to think about. But this virus, it put everything in perspective. Life, death. What did the pawns matter now? The virus didn't see lame streamers and fox fucks. To the virus, we're all just meat. The virus, that is the great equalizer. So, on the last day of my two-week quarantine before I went home, I wrote a note to the pawns. I paid a trustee to deliver it to him, tucked inside his national review. Hey, Pons, I wrote. You want to know what else snitches get? Book deals, motherfucker. Fixer out. That was The Pons by Jess Walter. That is the first time I've read anything about Michael Cohen that made me laugh a little. (laughs) But why are you thinking about Michael Cohen? (laughs) Why is he a worthy protagonist for you right now? I can honestly say I'm usually not thinking about Michael Cohen, but (laughs) there are so many of these Trump characters that I wish I'd never heard of. Uh, But there's something weird and poignant and needy about him. Mm. This sort of broken, needy guy who, if he hadn't slithered up to Trump's ship and attached himself like a barnacle, would still be pulling (laughs) taxi cab scams somewhere. (laughs) And yeah, when, uh, when the idea of writing stories based on the news popped up, I thought, oh, the only one of these characters that I could possibly imagine in fiction is poor, sappy, sad, corrupt, awful Michael Cohen. And Cohen is famous or infamous, like Mike the Situation, like Martin Shkreli. What is your story telling us about fame in America right now? I mean, we are so far down that road from the 1960 presidential debate when, you know, Nixon lost points for sweating on television. And now we have an actual horrible reality TV star in the White House. Fame is so ingrained in what's wrong with America that I don't even really know where to start except to let it speak for itself. Let, you know, Michael Cohen bro hug the sitch in prison and feel alone because he's the only famous person on his block. I I don't know how else to say it, that um, (laughs) that these marginal characters are famous and are the people we talk about. And, And somehow, we've decided should run the country during the most devastating, you know, moment in the last 50 years of our history. Is Michael Cohen a better person for having confessed or for taking his chances with the courts? Like, can the people trust he's actually been bettered, as he puts in your story? Because, you know, he talks about being bettered. And I'm wondering about that. I can't say that my fictional Cohen is bettered, and that might just be the cynic in me. I mean, the vessels of uh, of redemption aren't chosen for their seaworthiness, you know? You just happen to stumble upon them. And he he does have an opportunity. Uh, you know, we'll see when he, when he and Rosie O'Donnell finish this book he's working on. You know? We'll see um, just how redeemed he is. But it's the kind of thing I find myself drawn to in fiction, 
do we get a second chance? Who deserves it? Where does everyday kind of heroism rise up? And I think it's at best ambiguous at the end of the story whether or not Michael Cohen is a changed man. But I hope for our sake that if he's not changed, uh, he's at least as vindictive as hell. Mm. Jess Walter speaking to me from his home in Spokane. Jess Walter is the author of six novels, including Beautiful Ruins, which was an international bestseller. His new novel, The Cold Millions, about the labor activist Elizabeth Gurley Flynn, will be published in October. I can't wait to read it. Thanks. Yeah, I just sold one. That's like $1.20 for me already. (laughs) Look how this day has worked out. You can hear my full interview with Jess Walter on our website, chronicles.fm, where you can also read The Ponds and other short fiction torn from today's headlines. Our reader was Oliver Wyman. Our sound designer and composer is Bart Warshaw. Our producer is Curtis Fox. Tyler Cabot is the executive producer and founder of Chronicles of Now. For Pushkin Industries, special thanks to Letal Malad and Jacob Weisberg. For the Chronicles of Now podcast, I'm Ashley Ford. Thanks for listening. It's Jacob Weisberg again. That was a preview of the Chronicles of Now from Pushkin Industries. New episodes of the podcast will be coming out weekly beginning on Wednesday, June 24th. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And let us know what you thought of the show on social media, or you can write a review in Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Pushkin Pods.